you know what? We've been having technical difficulties, and um, but hey, unstoppability, you know, endure and persevere. So that said, I'm here with my backup dancer, Zach, Fanny Pack Zach, and we are not in the park today because Zach is in Vancouver. Good morning, Zach. How you doing? Good morning. Doing great today. It's still dark out here, and it's raining as usual in Vancouver, but it's uh, it's going to be a good day. Okay, so what are you doing in Vancouver? Visiting my sister-in-law and my little nieces. Oh, how great. Okay, wonderful. So, you know what? This this um, So, when we're not able to get together and dance, uh, we do something, we, we record something that's inspirational and empowering. And today's topic is hashtag never silence your pain. And we want to let everybody know that when we're going through hard times, the best thing you can do is talk about it. And you're going to talk to people that aren't going to judge you and tell you to get over it and just suck it up. No, that doesn't work. We're entitled to our emotions. We want to express them and we want to talk to people we like and trust and that will just listen and just let us be where we are. And the reason I say this is so vitally important is because if we keep it pented up and in inside of us, one day we just crack. And then what happens? Well, we buy a bunch of firearms and then we uh, go and shoot and kill people and then we kill ourselves. And that is what I believe. Now, that's a very extreme case. But when people have no record uh, of any mental illness and then and no criminal record and then they go and shoot people and then kill themselves, that's a problem. And it is this part of, and I can only speak for myself, is when I had a lot of pain within me, having nowhere to go with it leads to extreme depression. And untreated depression is the number one cause of suicide. And so we either kill ourselves slowly through disease and pain, emotional pain, physical pain, spiritual pain, or we can blatantly kill ourselves, which is what they say is suicide. But I have this whole thing about slow suicide. And the slow suicide is when we're constantly diseased, diseased in our mind, our body, our spirit. And that leads to premature aging, premature um, death. And so it just doesn't work. That's the bottom line. And so, Zach, you playing professional baseball, which is amazing. But I wanted to ask you, when you, you said uh, you were 21 years old, you were drafted by the Phillies out of college and you were playing with the Phillies, um, but you, you're batting, you were zero for 51 or 52, you said. 51. Is that right? Zero for 51? Yeah. Yeah. And you went through a really hard time. Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't go through a hard time when you're drafted and then you're not performing? You're not uh, doing well. And then you said that it was really rough. Like you lost... You lost your mojo. You lost your, your, your like, wanting to play baseball, you were saying. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I, I wanted to pretty much just quit. And not only because I was over 52, but it was um, – and, 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 I mean, it's fine to, to try to tell somebody, you know, get over it, get through it. But you have to help them too. You can't it's, – it's tough not – it's so tough to do it on your own. And so just being like – get over it. Don't be a wuss, you know, whatever. Like, okay, can you help me? Can you help me? Can Yeah. Am I, am I able to talk to you? And that, that, that simply in itself will, will get, will help get me through. Mm-hmm. And so when, you know, when I was going through that time and it's, it's like, well, you're mentally, you can't get through it cause you're mentally weak. Well, can you help me be a little bit mentally stronger? What can I do? Is there anything that you can help me with? Um, can we just talk about it? Can we talk about maybe a time when you went through a tough time? Um, you know, and sharing those, sharing those times of, of their distress and their times of struggle kind of help other people with, with their times. of So if somebody would have shared, Hey, I was over 30 at one time too. This is what helped me at that time. That may have helped instead of just being like, you know, um, well, you just got to suck it up and, and get over it. Well, that's fine and all, but you know, help me with that. That's where my parents, you know, I was able to reach out to my parents, talk to my dad, talk to my mom, my number one fan. And, um, you know, and then also, uh, as I was saying earlier, before we had technical difficulties is, 
you know, I had a, I had a group of friends that always wanted to hear what I had to say when I came home from season. And, you know, I had friends that also called me during season. So that helped as well. Just checking in on me. You know, people want to know the behind the scenes of what they see on TV. They see these major league baseball players playing on TV, but they don't see the behind the scenes of, you know, the minor leagues and how they got there and the bus trips and the different games and the different promotions that go on a game. So they want to hear your story. And, you know, not everybody has an exciting story like a, like a professional baseball player, but there has to be a place where everybody can reach out and talk about their problems and maybe get some insight on other people's problems that could help them with their problems. And, you know, it is about getting through it and, and being strong and, you know, not being a wussy or a pussy, whatever you want to say. It is about that. But at the same time, you know, we can't do it on our own. We need help. We need someone to talk to. We need a support system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need someone to give us some tools and some guidance, some tips and tricks to get through life and to get through those moments. Uh, because if it's just, you know, get over it, that that's just, you know, that's how it is. That's how life is. Well, then, okay, then. Like you said, I guess I'm just going to, you know, deal with my depression and pick up some guns and kill people. And that's going to make me feel better, which really it doesn't, because then in the end, I'm going to kill myself. So that's, uh, you know, I had I had my parents to reach out to. I had my friends who wanted to hear my story. And um, and that helped a lot. It didn't really help in the moment um, because you're caught up in the moment. And like you said, I, I, I didn't realize I was focusing on the negatives of being over 50 as opposed to being positive and being like, man, I'm living out my dream. I got drafted, you know, a couple months ago and I'm here playing professional baseball, which is what I want to do my whole life. I was focused on, man, I'm not performing. This is not what I thought it was going to be. And now I'm failing. And now this sucks. Baseball is not fun anymore. I want to just go home and just be depressed. Yeah. Well, that, that's amazing. So wait, I want to talk about two things. Number one, you said your mom's your greatest fan. It is so vitally important to have a really um, connective relationship with our parents. It's fundamental, especially with my coaching technology and methods, that this is huge, is we have to reconcile our relationship with our parents. But you were very fortunate. So when you said you had your mom um, and you would talk to her and with her, how did she, did she just listen to you or did she offer advice? Like, how did that go? You know, just kind of describe that a little bit. Like when you needed to talk about stuff, she, how did that go for you? Uh, she would, she would listen and she would also give me advice, uh, you know, as far as like, you know, you're talented, you, you know, you just because you're over 50 doesn't mean that you're a great player, you know, like, and then my, my dad would do more of the listening he would listen and then he would be like, well, why don't you try this or try that? You know, he was a, he's a baseball coach, baseball player himself. So he would give me different things to try out that may, that may help. And, um, so I would try those things and I'd come back to him and be like, man, it's not working. And he'd be like, you know, just, you know, you only gave it a game or two, you know, so just, just relax and trust that, that it may work, you know, in a couple games. And then they, they more were just, they more were just listening and also, they were helping me with kind of my thoughts and I would, you know, complain or bitch about something and they would be like, well, you know what, you know, you're lucky that you're playing baseball, that you're playing professional baseball. Yeah, it does suck that you may have a coach that doesn't like you or whatever, but you're going to have to try to find a way to be happy and enjoy the moment. And, and, you know, um, and then my dad would be like, you know, try this out in the cage, try this out in the game. And my mom would just be, be more like trying to just supporting kind of just supporting of my emotions. And I think that's what I, I totally think that's what that, that's the difference between men and women is they're supportive of emotions. And then the men want to do something physical to try to fix it. So yeah, but your so. parents did not say suck it up and get over it. They did not say that. Um, yeah, I don't really remember. I don't really remember them saying suck it up and get over it. They might've been like, you know what, maybe you need to go talk to the coach or like, you know, go express your feelings to the coach and say how you feel or, or ask him how, to, how he can help, you know, go it, go and talk to him and ask him how he can help. And, you know, and I actually remember myself saying, you know, I did go and ask them and I had a problem when I was younger of, and I think still I've been working on it is the way I asked the question, the way I asked the question may have been sounding like a smart ass or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you're in, 
when you have a certain emotion going on and you go to ask a question and somebody asks it in a smart ass tone or, or a different tone that you don't like, you also got to de- decide of where they're coming from. You know, I'm struggling going, you know, over 30 at this point or whatever. And I'm pretty frustrated. So when I ask a question, I may sound frustrated, but really you got to kind of see where I'm coming from too of like, man, I need some help here. Like mm-hmm. help me out. I, I'll do anything to, to, to get out of this. And it seems of like, well, you're being a smart ass. I don't know if that's a smart ass question or what. And people that are listening to this are going to totally know what I'm sounding like because I've been sounding like this my whole life. I still do from time to time. And it's just something that I've been working on. We all have stuff to work on like that. But so, yeah, they, they, they didn't really say, you know, suck it up and be a man. You know, that's just part of it. It was more like, you know, try to figure something out, go ask them if they can help. And, uh, you know, we're here when you need to talk and you know, that's how it was. Well, and that's what it takes. That's my whole point, right? Is when somebody's going through a hard time, we don't want to hear, you know, get over it, just go out there and do better. No, we want to feel like you're at least listening and then offering advice, but it's more of that energy of, you know, you're talented. This is, you know, maybe you could talk to the coach. They were just, they had this energy of, of listening and understanding. That's what I get, you know, and and we're not saying they always said the right thing or the best thing, but that feeling like they were supporting you, encouraging you. That's what was happening. Wasn't it Zach? Yeah. And believe in believing in it. Yes, exactly. And that's what it takes. Now, my, I could never have done that with my parents. They were they had no idea how to even talk or relate. They, they were so like out there and, and caught up in their own crap that they did not, they, they didn't listen to any of us. They didn't even talk to us. And that I'm not blaming them in any way, but that was just not their way. So I had to go look for other people who would do that. And it was my best friend's mother. And so if we have people, and that, I believe, is also what saved my life, like helped me not to kill myself sooner than later, or at least try to kill myself sooner than later, is looking back, I had people who at least I felt were trying to listen and trying to help me and trying to um, get me through a lot of rough times emotionally. And, And Zach, you're really saying the same thing. And that for the point is, is get out there and, and be willing to talk about it and share your feelings and, and your thoughts to people that you have some connection with that, that are good listeners and that they're supporting, even if they don't have the answers. And studies do show, by the way, that we actually can move through tough emotional times when we have someone to talk to. Now, here's the thing. I have I learned this from uh, a woman that spoke um, about complaining versus venting. You know, we can sit there and complain and complain and complain, but that doesn't get us anywhere. So the thing that I learned was this venting. Venting is complaining, but you're committed to a solution. You're committed to remedy, remedying the, the, the problem or issue and that you're still open to um, transform it and get answers and to have it be better and to get rid of the pain that's causing problems and commit to being open, coachable, trainable, to listen to advice and not keep complaining. Because Zach, we know people who just complain, but they don't want to hear answers and they don't want to do anything to um, remedy the situation. Do you know people like that? I was like that. I was like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I was too. We, right? So, yeah, you were like that. But what had you shift? Ooh, I don't even know. I, wow, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. Well, think about it. Look back. I think exactly what you're saying is is when I turn from just being like, complaining about as opposed to being trying to find a solution for it. I think that's exactly that's spot on. I, I never realized that, that that may have been the shift, you know, cause I can't really pinpoint a shift, but that, that may have been it when I 
stop just complaining and started being like, let's try to find a solution to this. Yeah, exactly. The one thing and we, yeah. yeah. The one thing we do know is you're not a quitter. You wanted to quit, but you didn't. Right? And can you remember? So you're going through a hard time. You're zero for 52. What was it looking backwards that had you not quit? Oh, yeah, you said you talked to your agent. This is before we were recording. That you wanted to quit, but you didn't. Can you remember what it was that had you not quit and had you keep going? What was that? It was just a basic. He gave me an opportunity, uh, and he said, you know, just try to go play in Fargo and, and, you know, just go give it a shot. And I'm all about giving everything a shot. I, I'll try anything out. So, And obviously I love baseball, and I was just – at that point, I, I hated the business and I hated how some of the coaches made me feel and how that whole situation of going over 52 made me feel. And so I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'll go give it one last chance. Mm. You know, and, and then I found the fun again. When I got to Fargo, it was just a totally different feel. You know, the guys that I met the first day there are still some of my best friends in life. Like, you know, the first day I meet these guys and they totally made me feel like a different person and uplifted me. And, you know, we kind of had similar stories as far as struggling in the minor leagues. And we, um, we, up, we uplifted each other. We knew we were great players. And we had been through similar things in the minor leagues. And, and look at that. I'm telling exactly what we're talking about because I just tried something out. I said, you know, I'll give it one more shot. And I meet these guys that had similar things. We had a support system amongst each other. We could sit in the locker room and talk about and vent about stuff, not complain. We could vent mm -hmm. and help each other through each situation that we had. And we performed extremely well in that situation. And I think the biggest part about, you know, I think one of the main lessons about today is that we have to be good listeners too. I think we have to be that support system. We can't just be out there looking for a support system. We also have to be that support system. Because um, it, I, I feel there was a shift maybe a couple years ago where everybody was like, I just hate people. I don't want to be around people. And I think people are starting to get out of that. They're starting to support each other more and more. And if you're just kind of like, yeah, I don't really care what you have to say. I don't really care about your emotions. I have my own emotions to deal with. Then everybody starts pushing each other away and we start having all these mass shootings. We start having all these you know, um, sexual assault instances and all these kind of things. but if we can kind of be there for each other and actually care for one each other again, that that in itself creates a full united global support system. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, this is so awesome, especially for the men in the world. Is historically men do, don't talk about it. They don't express themselves. And that's a problem. And you were very fortunate, Zach, to have a mom and a dad that listened. Um, you felt they were supporting you. They gave you guidance and advice. But then let's talk about it was your um, agent, your agent, right, that said, just go try playing in Fargo. Yep. I was, I, yeah, I was lucky enough that he had that connection. And he said, just go give it a try. Yeah. But he said it like he was supportive. You know? Yeah. He, yeah. You see that common theme there? is that at some level he wasn't telling you to suck it up and, you know, get over and get out there and, you know, be somebody. He was just saying, hey, I understand, but hey, why don't you give it a shot here and see how it goes and go from there. And that, to have that, kind, you know, like the energy underneath it, he, was, he wasn't judging you. He was just saying, hey, look, go out there, and you did. And... Ten years later, bam! Right there, you are playing and and having fun with it, right? You got your groove back, so to speak, and kept going, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's the support. It's not like a ba it's not like a baby, you know, thing. And I think um, this is exactly what uh, you know. Our one of our two fans, uh, Nat, was talking about last week, as far as. You know, her brother was going through a situation and, and he was recovering and he lived with her and it wasn't like he let her, he, 
she let him, you know, just lay on the couch all day and be like, you know, it's okay and support him. It was like, here's how I'm going to support you. She said, you know what, get up off your butt, Mm -hmm. you know, go do some laundry, make your bed, you know, do something around the house, do some gardening with me. And that's a support system too. It's, you know, it's a tough love thing. It's not just like sitting there over him on the couch and be like, stop being a pussy, get up off the couch and do something. It's like, you know, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to support you. I'm going to give you this opportunity. I'm going to give you this job. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go and, and give you this, you know, housework to do. You have to do the dishes, you have to do the laundry, you know? And so that's kind of a tough love, but it's also a support at the same time. It's not just, you know, getting in someone's face and being like, you know, stop being a pussy, you know, you know, the, you, you just got to get over it, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, that's all fine. And I do have to get over it and I do have to deal with it, but can you help me? Can you help me get over it? Can you help me deal with it? So there has to be that support system too. Yeah. And, and here's the thing here. The end, here's the answer folks. This is why I do what I do because I needed it for myself growing up is the way to get over it is to actually feel it, emote, talk about it, and be okay with it. That's how we get over it. That's how we um, transcend it. That's how we allow ourselves to be human and then go, oh, okay, that was then, this is now, and I'm going to give it a whirl. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to quit. It's the moment we aren't allowed to feel our feelings and express ourselves, that's what has us never get over it. And we know those people in this world, they never get over some of the most devastating emotional traumas of their life. Right, Zach? I mean, yeah, you have, people, you have to face it, yep. Uh-huh. You, have, you, have, yep. You, have to, you have to face it. If you never face it and you're always just kind of uh, – holding it in the back of your mind, it's almost like you're holding a grudge against that fear and you're never going to want to face it. So you have to face it and feel it. Like you said, feel it. Mm-hmm. And that, that helps you with the, uh, with the getting over it. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Vegas shooter. You know, his dad was most wanted FBI list and his dad was a criminal um, and a felon and he never got over it. He didn't have a dad that could help him like your dad could and give him solid advice, you know, backed up by the same experience. He didn't have that support. And it's no wonder he was so um, tormented inside and then just manifested that by acting out and doing something very, very vicious and brutal. Mass murder, suicide, right? That's what happens when we suck it up, we don't work through it, we don't express ourselves, and we don't get over it. And so, and it happens over and over and over again. So we're saying today's theme is hashtag never silence your pain, but you want to express to people who are going to listen. That's why you and I dance and empower people with inspiring uh, information and our stories and what we went through. I mean, Zach, I can't tell you how much it means to me to hear what you have to say, especially as a male and a successful male who played pro baseball. It doesn't matter if you play baseball. If you're ever a pro athlete, that is irrelevant. What's relevant is you had a dream and you had that dream become real. And then you were able to sustain that dream for 10 years. That is virtually impossible for most human beings. And what really did it, if you look backwards, like Steve Jobs says, right, the only way to move forward is to connect the dots looking backwards. And all along, it it was your ability to step up and say what was going on for you, have people to talk to who would listen and support you and believe in you, right? And you kept going that way. That is what it takes to have the mental capacity and ability to keep going and sustain a thriving career, whether it's sports, whether it's business, whether it's being an entrepreneur, right? Or being the best wife or husband or parent, mother or father, that's what it takes. And so we're saying, you know what? Um, We're here to listen. And we're not doing our show, but we want people to comment, to ask us questions, to 
to, to say what's on their mind, to have their comments and feedback and, and be able to express especially the negative, the stuff that isn't working. Um, because a lot of times men don't want to talk about it because there's a level of either embarrassment, shame, or humiliation. For us women, we can go to other women and talk about it and there's more acceptance of, of expressing our emotions. But again, men in general, I'm not speaking for every man, I'm speaking across the board in general. And so your thoughts on that, Zach, wouldn't you agree that there's a lot of men who don't have a place to go and they don't feel comfortable talking about it? Yeah, because then you, you're just considered like a, uh, <laughs> you're considered like a woman, I guess. Like, hey, stop being a woman with your feelings. You know, you don't need to share your feelings with me. I don't really care. You know, just be a man and stand up for yourself. Um, and really, this this is what happens is over so many years of men being raised the way that they are. And this is exactly, you know, I, I read an article about this. And, and the men being raised it the way that they are is that they turn into um, some kind of a human being where they just shove everything down and they shove it down and they shove it down because really like, oh, my friends don't want to hear me talk about that. that. Those are feelings. Those are real actual feelings that they don't want to hear. But if you actually talked about feelings of love or feelings of lust about a woman, like if you talked about last night when you had you know sex with, with a woman and she's hot, then those are perfectly fine. But if you have real emotions of, of, of hurt or depression or sorrow or feeling sorry for somebody or actually wanting to cry because of a situation, you know, that those emotions aren't allowed to be talked about. And so I think that when these emotions are talked about and you're considered like, oh, you're just a woman, why are you talking about that kind of stuff? You know, we don't really care to hear that stuff. It makes us feel uncomfortable. This is where men need to shift in their listening skills and hearing their friends out and hearing what their feel their friends' feelings are all about, as opposed to just being uncomfortable with hearing real life stuff, you know, and and not this fake lusty world of of sex and drugs. Right. Uh, it's uh, there's 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 so much more to life than just the happy emotions. There's the sad emotions too, and we all feel them. We all have them. So we have to have some place that we can express them and, and have them supported. And that helps, that helps everybody become a man, like expressing those feelings and feeling those feelings that helps you become a man that helps you be strong. That helps you, you know, be stronger in the next situation than when it arises. And in the future, you know, you can be your own support system because you've had that support system in the past. And, and now you can be your own support system and you can talk to yourself about it and feel those feelings and get through them yourself because in the past you've had support and you know what that support feels like. And so you can give it back to yourself. And so it's this big cycle and we can start creating a huge support system amongst men, amongst these group of men. And like I said, when I first went to Fargo, we had this support system of these men who had been through similar situations and we talked to each other about it. And yeah, we laughed and we, you know, we had all sorts of good times and we talked about the good times and the bad times and, and that support system brings life and brings happiness to those bad and those, those weird kind of uncomfortable feeling emotions. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm, I mean, I have been a stand for this for, for men for a long time and it, it, I coach men and the thing is they usually feel most comfortable opening up to a woman because, you know, we're, we're historically uh, been allowed to express ourselves and have emotions. And we're really, well, the times are changing and um, it's getting better and better and better in terms of men really opening up and having a voice and being um, acknowledged for sharing feelings. And as a matter of fact, I only deal with men who are able to share their feelings. Otherwise, I have no interest. Like, seriously, zero interest. And um, that's the thing is, I'm going to say, the most attractive thing from my point of view about a man is his ability to express his emotions and to speak um, about how he's feeling 
and when things aren't going well and that he's venting and, and committed to a solution, committed to um, being more empowered from within and, and working on growing and becoming wiser and more confident and self-respectful. That is the most attractive thing ever. But I can only speak for myself. But the last thing I want to do is hang around any human being who isn't willing to share and be vulnerable and, and say what's truly there for them. Because then there's no point. We can't connect to people who don't share who they really are. And that's why we do this. So the, the whole thing today, Zach, is shut up and dance. <laughs> right? 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 We're hypocrites. Right? I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're hypocrites. But, okay, two things here. Shut up and dance. And then we're like, get up and dance. We're like, just move. Dance. Move your body. Connect to your body. And we're adding in, it's okay to feel. It's okay to have emotions. And all emotions happy, sadness, sorrow, grief, anger, resentment, as long as we can talk about it and be committed to a a solution and transforming it to be healthy and be more self-respectful, self-confident, have higher levels of self-worth and self-esteem, then it's the best freaking thing you could ever do for yourself. So yeah, we say shut up and dance, but we're also saying you know, while you're in between dances, we can, can we talk, you know, hey, it's Cameron, you talk and say, let's talk about it. And let's see how we can uh, be empowered and have courage in the face of things aren't, when things aren't working. That's what life is about. That's how we are happiest and, and most uh, successful. And when we're having the most amount of fun and we're living a life of freedom inside and out. And that's what this is all about, isn't it, Zach? I mean, this is what you and I are about. Point. Blank. Yeah, for sure. I, I And I want just, I want men to start being comfortable with hearing emotions and feeling emotions and supportive of emotions. And you can be a hard ass and you can tell your friend to get over it, but you still have to hear them out. You still have to hear their, their feelings and their emotions because you have the same ones. And you can't shove yours down as well. So I think the the most important part is that there are men that want to talk about it, but they they don't have anywhere to go. So everyone's got to try to be that support system. And and in return, you'll create your own support system too. So when when you're in time of need and you're in time of, I need to share something, I need to get something off my chest, I need to vent, you'll have that support system too because you created it yourself. Yeah, exactly. And and self-talk, is really, really also vitally important is to have positive self-talk and that works, you know, and we definitely want to be in tune with ourselves and our emotions, you know, and that's another thing is we have to actually take a hard look at ourselves and go, how am I feeling today? What am I feeling today? Uh, What is my point of view? Am I, am I focusing on the negative or the positive? Am I having an uh, optimistic day or pessimistic day is this is like self-reflection this is delving into self and then taking responsibility for our attitude and our character and our uh, our beingness we are human beings meaning we have feelings and emotions and the the key to the whole thing and what has been able to give me more power than anything is to understand all of my emotions and why I feel the way that I do and fe- and don't feel the way that I want to feel. And that's what gives us that sustainability and that empowerment to have the life of our dreams, but enjoy the journey to be happy all along the way, regardless of whether or not we are zero for 52. Imagine being zero for 52, but going, wow, oh, this is interesting. I'm not normally zero for 52. Yes, I've leveled up into the pros, and it is no longer college baseball. It is now professional baseball. Let me look at zero for 52 and see what's really going on within me that could turn zero to 52 to 52 and zero, or the other way around, right? And then if we can look at it that way, And also know that, you know, zero for 52 does not define our self-worth and our our greatness. 
is that it's just a statistic. And clearly we can say when somebody's not hitting the ball, right, and they're striking out over and over again, that there's something within that human being that is just a disconnect to their uh, innate greatness. And that's all that's happening. And we just have to look at ourselves and go, huh, that's interesting. And then talk to the people who understand that and get that and can help us through it. And that will do it. And that's why you, Zach, you and I do this mental performance coaching and why I have started this, my coaching business back in uh, 2011. But my process really started in 2009 to really understand based on basic neuroscience and languaging, how the brain computes information and how our subconscious and unconscious mind works against us most of the time and how to um, use our minds and mental capacity for good and not evil and then have the highest level of performance and be happy all along the way. That's what this is about, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, so thank you so much. Everything you shared today is so amazing. Like, you are just like, blow my mind. You blow my mind. I love that, you know, your hashtag fanny pack Zach, you have your fanny pack, you're willing to dance, you're willing to go for your dream of being a backup dancer. Now that, you know, you're moving into a new uh, phase of your life after playing, being retired now two years from pro baseball. And one of your dreams, I mean, it's not your only dream, you have lots of dreams, but you're in action, working on it, fulfilling upon it. Right. And also being a huge role model for men and for human beings and to express yourself as a man and be there to help others and support them. And your whole shtick is um, love, unity, you know, supporting each other, healing this world and healing humanity through love and support, emotional, spiritual support. And then we add the dance because. Dance is another way of expressing ourselves through our bodies and whatever that means. So we're saying you don't need to go dance in the park like us, but if you have any inkling to dance, make sure you do it, even if it's in the privacy of your own home, to the music you like, and you don't need music, just move. Get up and move. Move around. Take a walk in nature. But if dancing's your thing, Don't hold back on it. Do it for yourself and your soul, your spirit, and your mind. And there's nothing better than dancing as far as I'm concerned. Bam! Any last words of wisdom, Zach? No, I can't wait to go and dance around uh, the city of Vancouver today. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and make sure uh, Sheena, your your beautiful wife, uh, is going to videotape you, right? She's going to tape you or get somebody to do that. Yeah, somebody will videotape me and I'll post some videos. Yeah. Okay, so we can't wait to see those. Thank you all for listening. We're back in the park Tuesday, right, Zach? We'll be back there on Tuesday. And we might and we might not even be at the park. You know what? It's a crapshoot with us. You're never going to know where we show up and we're just going to bust a move. Okay? <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Okay, don't even mess with me, LaKeisha and Fanny Pack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you so much, Zach, for being available. Um, and we're going to post this up and get on with it. And you know what? Men, women, people really be willing to talk about it because we are listening and we support you and we get you, we see you, we understand you. And at any time, comment and ask us questions and and let us know that you're out there and whatever you're going through, uh, feel free to express it and we'll address it. Right, Fanny Pack Zach? We'll address sure. it. any concerns, problems. We're going to talk about it, okay? Talk. We're going to talk. We're going to talk. Hey, can we talk? Can we talk? We can talk. We can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again, Zach. We can talk. We- Oh my God, you're amazing. Okay, have fun in Vancouver. And thank you all for listening and supporting us. And to our two fave fans in the park, Doe and Nat. Okay, and and that that number is going to grow. But it just takes, you know, one person and another person and another person. And so we'd do it if we had zero fans, 
right, Zach? Like, nothing's going to stop us. We don't need fans. It's just nice to have people who are looking for us in the park. They're probably wondering where we are right now. Totally. I know. But we told, did you tell them that we're, you're going to be traveling? I think you did, right? Yeah, we told them. Okay. And then um, we're eventually start putting together some really cool events where people can come out and dance with us. So, you know, stay tuned, people. More coming. Anyway, uh, get out there, dance, move around, wiggle, jiggle. And here's to all of your dreams coming true and never, ever give up. Never, ever stop. Keep going. Don't quit. Talk about it. Break down. Cry. You know, have your feelings and then get up, brush yourself off and keep going. Don't quit. Don't quit. Keep going. Okay. We love you all. Thank you. Bye, Fanny Pack Zach. You the bomb. You the man. You awesome. See you later. Peace. Ooh. Okay. Over and out.